Hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Central Innovations webinar on project coordination. Um, my name is Nanda Mogollan, and I will be on one of the presenters with Mark Horrocks um, today. And uh, for the next 45 minutes, um, we'll show you an introduction to some of the tools and workflows for project coordination we use and promote here in Central Innovation. Um, just click. Please uh, note that this particular session is not a training course per se, um, and we have just a limited amount of time. So the presentation will be somewhat fast-paced, and uh, some, we, we're going to skip some of the uh, explanation of the tools that we're using with the purpose of giving you a, a broad idea of the capabilities of both the tools and the workflows. So with that in mind, Let's get started. Um, project coordination in the context of this webinar, it's also known as design coordination or sometimes services coordination. It actually refers to the arrangement of the different elements of building federated by disciplines, usually architectural, structural, mechanical, electrical, and a few others, to enable them to work together in alignment and to work efficiently. Um, That is coordination beyond class detection of building services. Um, typically speaking, uh, project coordination is the responsibility of the project lead, usually the architects or a project manager. And his role is to ensure that all the other designs, structural, mechanical, and so on, uh, are following and that are aligned and in sync with the architectural design intention. That needs to be done both within a um, the context of your working models and also the 2D documents. And that needs to be done across both tools and the, the appropriate workflows. So knowing that we have all of that um, checked in, uh, we can then uh, be confident that all the designs are in line with the overall design intention and that's going to help you to save time in predictable issues, changes, and future RFIs during construction. The coordination workflow typically goes through an iterative process of checking a design, comparing the different versions of the designs probably of the same discipline or across uh, different disciplines, finding issues across those different designs, communicating the issues you just found, and tracking or following up those coordination issues until they are actually solved. So let's use this particular workflow or these few steps as an example. And today we want to show you a full 3D and 2D coordination workflow using the best available tools. Um, with these tools and, an appropriate, and a, an appropriate workflow, you can easily improve the coordination of your projects. These tools that we're going to show you today are both Solibri Model Checker and Bluebeam Review. Solibri Review actually complement each other by helping you coordinate the full spectrum of the information of a project, both the 3D information or what we typically call the model, and the 2D information or the drawings. Now, let's start with an example of a model-based coordination following this typical workflow of checking, comparing, finding, communicating, and tracking using Solibri Model Checker. In this particular case, our friend Mark Horrocks will show you uh, how that goes. So let me pass the screen to Mark. Thanks, Nando. So you should be able to see my screen now. So um, coordination has always been an important part of the design and building process. With more collaborators using 3D modeling and BIM, coordination processes are moving to accommodate. For example, you may be getting models from collaborators. Your current workflow may be to add them into your own model. If these models are complex, it may cause 
slowdowns in your own model. One solution could be to federate the models, including yours, in another software, allowing you to keep your authoring tool fast and therefore keeping your modelers happy because they're not waiting for model regeneration. We can federate large numbers of complex models in Celebri. This is the Celebri start screen here, so we can import um, architectural, electrical, maybe a few ventilation models and a structural model. Once we have the models federated in Celebri, here they all come. We can see here, we can isolate architectural and some electrical fittings here, um, some ventilation models, and of course, uh, structural steel. So as I said, once we've federated these models, we can examine the models and check their accuracy. Firstly, we can do um, visual checking. And we can do this by just walking through the model. Celebri has some very good ability for us to do this. We can just choose a game mode option and we're just walking through the building. We can walk through doors, of course, uh, but not through walls or uh, fall off railings. Um, once we get ourselves uh, into position, we can kind of nudge into a window there, no, that's not what we want, into that room there, no, not into that room there. Uh, we can also um, uh, set our eye height, we can adjust our eye height so that we're in a service uh, area. And once again, we can just start walking through that service area, looking for clashes. And this is what we consider to be visual checking. We've also got a location map which gives us an indication of where we are in the project, both the little gold arrow. We can click around on the screen and move our arrow from place to place. We can also vertically go up and down the building. I can jump up vertically. This is really good for setting yourself up to a service riser or a lift core, um, and then just jumping up floor to floor, systematically looking at uh, visually checking for any clashes within the project. We also have a bunch of navigation tools to allow us uh, to interrogate the model. We've got some hide uh, functions here, which simply hide elements as you start clicking on them. We've also got a transparent option. Uh, the main difference between transparent and hide is that transparent is simply a toggle. So once we've made something transparent, we can click on it to untransparent it, if that's the right word. We've got some powerful sectioning tools, which allow us to uh, section up our federated model. These large section planes appear, which we can just uh, drag across the building. We can have as many of these section planes. I think we can have up to six section planes, so we can really start chopping this building up. One of the really nice things about the section plane is the ability to flip the model on the section plane. So we can just set ourselves up to our our um, service riser, for example, reorientate our view, and then we can look directly at the other side. So once we find an issue, um, we'll want to communicate that. Um, we have um, the opportunity to use dimensions and markup tools. The markup tools are very simple. Um, a simple line option, so if I click the right button, we can have uh, arrows and text and all that kind of stuff, uh, revision clouds. We also have some interesting tools in here where we can um, tag elements, so it gives us some information about what that element is, and these tags can be fully uh, customized. Here's a storefront window, uh, here's a bit of wall, here's another bit of wall, here's another bit of wall. Um, and you can actually tag anything you want onto that, so it becomes quite useful as a communication tool uh, in the future as well. Um, dimensioning tools as well. Um, 
sometimes you need to communicate um, some complicated dimensions to somebody. Um, we've got this lovely uh, dimension tool here. At the moment I'm seeing the um, as the bird flies dimension of 3.6, but we can get vertical dimensions and horizontal dimensions as well. So it makes it very easy to communicate where this particular element that is failing is. So we can communicate those quite easily. But before we um, check and comment on our um, collaborators' models, um, it's probably a good idea to check um, your own models first. Now, to speed this up, um, I have a model that I've um, <laughs> checked already. Here we see there are three rule sets um, that I have run through um, Celebri's automated checking. They're from our standard training rule sets and cover general things like uh, missing beams and what have you. So let's have a quick look at some of those things. Um, uh, the project has, um, you know, it's telling us that there's no beams in the project. This could be a failure in the uh, export from the authoring software. Um, we generally suggest um, a what you see is what you get export from your authoring tools, uh, setting up some views in, um, in, in your authoring software. Um, here is another issue here, we've got no construction types. When you click on an issue, it zooms to it and isolates the elements around it, so it's very clear to see the issue. Um, this particular issue, um, you know, how can we check the code requirements of a certain type of stair if Celebri does not know what sort of stair it is? Um, missing components above columns, if I double click on the view, it tries to highlight and zoom. If I start expanding the results here, the information tab down the bottom here is giving me all sorts of information about um, the issues. Um, with Celebri's ability to understand relationships between elements, it's actually giving us potentially the answer to what's going on here. And if we have a look at this issue, it's saying that the column is not touching anything at its top. And then it says that the distance to the nearest is 450 millimeters. So it's also it's almost saying, hey, there should be a beam here, where previously it said um, our project was missing beams. There's all sorts of things like that, um, missing walls. Um, we have examples here where the, uh, the, the walls should be touching anything. Um, uh, clearance around elements. Um, it's always a nice one to show here. Suspended ceilings, this is a classic case. Uh, a long corridor, the ceiling gets lowered for some reason to fit some extra mechanical equipment. The window down one end of the corridor gets repaired, uh, gets lowered, the window down the other end doesn't, and so on and so forth. So checking models um, is not only for construction coordination, which I've kind of just shown you there. We can check models at all stages of a project. So in sketch design, we can check things like building areas meet the design criteria. Now, are the individual rooms um, certain preset areas? Bed, uh, bathrooms must be less than six square meters. Kitchens must be greater than 10 square meters and stuff like that. Are the total, uh, the totals of the types correct? Total residential versus total office, total car parking. In sketch design, we can also create design iterations in our authoring software and communicate these to the client through Celebri with comments on which option they choose to be recorded inside a Celebri comment for future. As we move into develop design, our checks can get more specific. Certain rooms require certain elements, so bathrooms must contain at least one toilet, two basins, one shower, one heated towel rail. Sprinklers must be certain distance apart. Ceiling heights must be higher than a set value. Ceiling heights must be consistent. Beams must be from an agreed list. Stairs must be code compliant. Railings must be higher than a meter. Walls and other elements must be sensible dimensions, not too skinny or too fat, not too short or too tall. Of course, we can do clash detection. You know, something simply touches something else. But the ability to find missing components, as we showed with the... Um, column missing issue, the column is too short, you know, or the column must touch something at its base. 
this could pick up floating columns or areas where the slabs have been lowered or are missing. There are 48 rules that we can use in Celebri to check a model. One is clash detection. So there are 47 other rules which can be used to validate your model. And we're not necessarily talking about geometry validation. Uh, we can check for office modeling standards. We can do some quality control using only objects from an agreed list, only specific door sizes, only specific bathroom objects. Specific metadata must be present within the elements. You know, it could be a company acronym based on a uh, object or a family element, uh, steel weights, etc. These data checks, these metadata checks, become even more important if your model is being used for further analysis. Perhaps you are doing um, thermal analysis, but you need information on the thermal properties of the um, external skin, the walls, the roofs, and the slabs. Does the parameter exist? Does it have some data in it? Is that data from an agreed list? Um, do you have fire rating properties for fire analysis? Uh, estimating and costing. Do you have the correct codes required associated to the elements? Now, by the way, you can add this data inside Celebri, even if you're not the author of the content. Um, we talk about the uh, philosophy of open BIM, but we're not manipulating the model. We're just adding data that helps us further analyze the building. All the information that um, we've been talking about is housed within this info tab here. Identification, location, quantities, materials, profile, it's all in here, including any custom property set information that you've added, fire rating, steel weight, uh, paint finish colors, um, and, and that kind of stuff. Finding these issues um, is one thing, but easily communicating them uh, to a num another company or collaborator or person um, that is charged with resolving the issue is something completely different. In Celebri, we use the communication layout to do this. Now, some of those issues that I was looking at um, in the checking tab, I've just transferred over into the communication tab uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. Now, earlier I mentioned we had two main types of models we check. We check our own models, we call those internal checks, and we check our collaborator models, we call those external checks. If the checks are internal, and we're checking our own stuff, and we're familiar with the team that's working on the model, we can tag that staff member who is going to fix the issue. So this issue here where there were missing beams, we can tag that issue to, I don't know, uh, Trevor. So we can add Trevor's name in there. And then the next issue, we can tag that to Trevor as well. Why not? And then the next issue, maybe this is going to be um, Sarah's issue. We can then create um, Excel reports to help the team leader with those workflow responsibilities. And those Excel reports can be made um, at the start of the week and he can use those or she can use those for their workflow. If the checks are external, we can gather all the collaborators together, either in a physical meeting room or via web, and methodically go through the slides and simply ask the question, who is going to fix this issue? We've got a presentation mode that we can use for this, and we can just click to the next issue and go, okay, who's gonna fix this one? And we can choose that to be the architect. It looks like an architect's problem. And then we can move on to the next one. Okay, who's gonna fix this one? We go, right, that's the architect as well. And so on and so forth. We can actually assign multiple tasks, so we can have architect and we can have um, mechanical. So we can have two uh, people assigned to the same issue. At the end of that meeting, we should be able to give all those people a file that they can go away with and then they can fix the issues. We can actually search through the presentation. We can say, I just want to see all the architect's issues. 
and then through the reporting function we can just report out those marked issues so these architect 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 mechanical so we can use those functions we can send um, PDFs or word style reports we can even send the entire Celebri file to them and they can filter and organize their issues in the free Celebri model viewer. So at no cost to a collaborator, they can be part of this electronic communication process. Or if they have a modern authoring tool, Revit or Archicad or Tecla and, and many others, we can send them something called a BCF file. This BCF format here, I'll just quickly save that out. Oh, it's already there, so I'll save on top of it. Now, BCF is um, BIM collaboration format, and um, I've just flipped into Revit here. I realize we have a large um, Archicad audience today, but I'm showing this process in Revit as you may very well be collaborating with a Revit um, organization. Once they receive the file, either via email, flash drive, file transfer site, Aconnex, whatever, um, they can open it within their own software. So they can simply open that file that we just created. And all the issues we were looking at appear in a list. And if we want to find those issues, we just double click on the issue. And it will navigate, rotate, and highlight, isolate and highlight the issues that we're supposed to be fixing. This makes it incredibly easy to find and fix these issues. One of the biggest issues we have is trying to explain where the issue is. We'll never have to have that conversation about where the beam is again. It's the one highlighted in your model. Which sprinkler out of 1,000 is the one we need to fix? The one that is highlighted in your software. Now, I've just... Um, I do have Archicad here as well, and just the BCF manager is very, very similar. Um, so, you know, and it would be the same in Tecla and SimpleBim and what have you. So the tools are available for cross-platform collaboration, and BCF is the key that holds it all together. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do is give the collaborator all the information so that can quickly fix the issue and give us a revised model. And to that end, Celebri has a very important rule used to compare iterations of the same model. So if I just open up two of the models here, in the old days we would rely on revision clouds on a PDF to show us where revisions were. In Celebri we can use model compare so if I choose this one as my um, old model, and this one as my new model, and run a quick check, uh, model revision comparison architecture, that sounds like a great idea. This is quite a small model, so it doesn't take a huge amount of time, but what it's supplies us with these are the three added pieces highlighted in blue these are the two deleted or removed pieces and these are the 54 modified elements and we can dig right down into these elements and we get all the information the old column 2.1 has the following modifications compared to the new column 2.1 the geometry has changed from 2.6 to 3.05. Uh, the the um, elevation has changed, the skin area has changed, and the volume has changed. So once a team know that Celebri is being used and they understand that the model compare, that, and they understand how the model compare tool works, there is a level of transparency that potentially stops model creep. At the start, I mentioned that Celebri can help speed up your authoring tool by keeping the file size small and keeping your collaborators' models out of your working model. 
This is one of many workflows that can help you be more productive. But as each office is different and has different workflows, we would like, obviously, the opportunity to chat with you to see how Celebri can help. Celebri is so configurable that we believe with minimum disruption, it can be incorporated into whatever your existing workflow is. Or we can look at better or different workflows. So that concludes the Celebri portion of this webinar with regards to um, 3D coordination workflow. And I will hand you back uh, to Nando. Okay, thanks, Mark. Uh, share my screen. All right, that was pretty cool. Uh, but now let's uh, take a look at an example of the other side of project coordination, that is a drawing-based coordination. This time, we're not going to use the models the way Mark did it, um, but we're going to use the complementary portion of a design, which is the documentation, and uh, we're going to use it in the most common um, format that there is for delivery, in this case, PDF format. For this, we're going to use Bluebeam Review, so let me bring... Bluebeam Review, it's a drawing-based collaboration tool. It's based on PDF, and it's a tool that's been specifically uh, developed for the AC industry. Um, to follow the same line of thinking of our collaboration workflow, the same one that Mark just uh, uh, went through, let's see how can Review can optimize that particular process of checking, comparing, finding, communicating, and tracking issues in a project. So let's start uh, first with checking. Um, here Review will help you by viewing, reviewing, and organizing a set of drawings. Uh, one of the things that sets Review apart from any other PDF reader is the ability to work with vectorial or line-based drawings, not image-based drawings, uh, but line-based drawings, in a cat-like environment. Now, um, what I mean by that is that you can actually measure and draw to scale in a drawing, in a PDF drawing, without affecting the original content. So let me show you a little bit of that. You have here on the screen the um, Bluebin Review um, interface. And all I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go and open a particular drawing. Let's use um, this right here. All right, so it does open the drawing. Um, but the things that I want to um, show you are things like this. Let's say I want to double check what's the size of that particular uh, piece of furniture that I have there on the screen. Um, Bluebeam will let you check things like uh, sizing. You have measuring tools like such. And what they do is that they're going to let you measure things up to the scale. So if you notice down here on my lower left, every single drawing will eventually have a scale somewhere. And as long as you're measuring down to the scale, you will be able to check visually by snapping to those lines, as you can tell, to the corners along a line or intersections. You can actually measure distances and put dimensions to it. As long as you can snap to the lines, you will be able to create those dimensions on top of a of the PDF. The other thing that you can do um, is you can actually sketch at a scale, not only just draw freely on top of the PDF, which is something that you can do with some of the tools, but do it uh, to a particular scale. So for such a thing, I'm just going to use, um, let's say, basic rectangle, assuming that what I want to do is just to add a little piece of furniture to this um, existing furniture. So I'm going to say, let's go that way, 900 millimeters and 600 and assume that that's fine. So you can actually draw, and you will uh, be sure that whatever you're drawing is actually to the right scale, like so. So 
these two particular items will let you um, um, create content that it's CAD-like. Uh, the other thing that it's um, highly useful, granted that the original PDF, it's been saved with search information, is uh, the ability to have access to your original layers in the same way that you did it in the authoring tool. So, in a drawing like this, let's imagine I want to get rid of the floor finishes because I don't want to see them for the purpose of marking up this drawing. So I can just go look for the um, actual layer that contains information. If I want to keep cleaning this up even further, I can just, just uh, go ahead and hide all the information that I feel that I don't need, like such. Right? And then you will have, without, I repeat, without um, modifying the original content, you just create an environment where you can actually check and mock up your drawings. Now, um, since one single drawing doesn't really um, convey the whole information that you uh, used, the entire design intention, chances are that you will have to handle several drawings from different sources and different sizes. So here's another point where Bluebeam Review will help you organize and check a, a, a full set of drawings that conveys the design intention. The way it does that um, is by organizing not only one single drawing in one single file, but organizing, organizing different uh, sources of information from uh, single page to multi-page PDFs into what it's called in, in Bluebeam Review a uh, drawing set. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this particular PDF. I'm not going to save that. And what I'll do instead is I'm going to go there to this particular tab there and I'm going to create a new set of drawings. The way it works in Bluebeam Review is that it will ask you to bring in different files and it will help you organize those files into different categories. Now, just to give you an idea, you can organize that automatically by following a set of rules, or you can do it manually, in which case you're going to classify the drawings yourself. This classification, it's done usually, let me give you an idea. If you follow the typical um, US classification of drawings, you will go some along, somewhat along the lines of, L for landscape, A for architecture, S for structural, and so on and on and on. Um, sorry, not that. You may want to use a, um, a different methodology, uh, in which case you will have to um, maybe change that or load a different type of category. Um, if you're not happy with that, you can change it. That's not a problem. Um, Though all you have to do in, in, in a case like this is, let's say I'm going to organize things manually and that I'm just going to add files as it goes. I can use the typical construction um, classification or I can have my own classification. Let's say I have one here um, and the one I have there, it's slightly different because I want to classify drawings that start with an SK, DA or CD as drawings in different stages, which is fine for what I need. Uh, so let's say I'm using that. Um, and I can go ahead then and select all of my drawings on this particular um, folder. And I'm going to say those are my architectural drawings for um, DA. And I'm going to add a few more. Let's say I need to have included some of my structural drawings and I select that and that and you go ahead and classify that as to be your structural drawings. Now let's click on OK for now just to show you what it's doing. So it's actually here on the left it's actually classifying all that information in different uh, tabs. Now, notice something that although you have access to a preview of all of those drawings, all of those documents, and these can be hundreds and hundreds of documents, 
through the uh, life cycle of a project. Uh, Bluebeam Review is not actively opening any of those. So I have nothing open on my screen. Therefore, having access to any of these drawings as such, it's absolutely quick. It's super quick because you don't have to wait for the software to load a 500 megabyte file full of PDFs. So that's going to speed up your project on, 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 on real time. Um, a typical set of drawings also consists of documents. So you can have those documents as well in your set of drawings. All you have to do is add a set of documents. Um, say I have uh, a particular document in here um, that it's part of the standards I'm going to follow. And I can go ahead and classify that as to be reference documents. And click on OK. And they appear down there. I can have as many as I want, and they're going to be uh, there um, on one click away from my, from from your interface. So in such a way, you will be able to uh, create a set of drawings, compiling all the sources of information of 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 your projects. Right. So let's move ahead and do a little bit of comparing, comparing and finding stuff. So to do so, I'm just going to close this set I just did. I'm not going to save it. I don't need that right now. Nope. Um, and now that you have to check and organize your set of drawings, um, you will be able to do some comparison across them. So for the purpose of project coordination, these can be done in two different ways. You can either compare two drawings of the same discipline but different revisions. So that is the previous revision of your structural drawing with the current revision of your structural drawings. Or you can compare uh, two drawings from different disciplines, which is the typical thing you will do or we used to do years ago with a backlight table and doing tracing of one drawing on top of the other typically services, mechanical against electrical, mechanical against structural, and so on and on and on. Um, to do this, we can use a couple of tools within Bluebeam Review. Let's start with one that is called split window. But this is a particular split window that will let you also synchronize the views. Let me show you how to do that. Let's say we're doing um, something like that with two different versions of a structural drawing. So I'm going to open my original structural drawing. That's one. And now I'm going to open my revision two of the structural drawing. So they apparently they look pretty much the same as far as I can tell. Um, but I want to uh, do a closer inspection on this. So let's use, to begin with, a split window, like so. I'm going to keep my older revision on the left and the newer revision on the right. And all I have to do is visually inspect the model, sorry, the drawing. And what Revy does for you is that it keeps both drawings synchronized. So it's actually showing you what's happening on one drawing in the previous version and one drawing in the next version. So in this particular case, I can tell there is a difference right here. And my structural drawing, my structural engineer was um, so kind not to uh, bother to give me a, a cloud change there. So I had to pick that out myself um, as it happens usually. I can tell also that there is a slight difference in here. There is a column that doesn't exist in my previous drawing. So this will help you briefly to quick compare two drawings side by side. Now, there's something else you can do with it. Let me close this particular window there. Let's uh, bring this back. And you can actually, instead of seeing those two side by side, you can use another feature of Bluebeam Review, which is overlay those pages. So by doing so, um, it will put a drawing on top of a drawing on top of each other. Um, you can choose the colors by default. It does have some sort of pre-selection. I don't quite like the blue, so uh, the green. So I'll change it to blue, which I like a little bit better. And let's click on OK. By doing so, if you notice, 
up there, it's actually creating a new document called overlay in this case. In that overlay, it's simply putting the differences into different color colors. So I can tell the blue one was my original and the red one is the new one. So you can tell that there are differences in here. I can pick up another difference in there. There's a change in the column size. And of course, my new column that shows up in red right there. All right. So that's comparing two different drawings um, of the same discipline but different revisions. Um, I'm not going to save this for now and actually I'm going to close this. Um, let me show you another example which will be what if you want to actually coordinate two different designs. Um, to do so, let me use a few services. So I want to compare from a completely different project, um, I want to compare a mechanical drawing. So I'm going to open that. And I want to compare that with, um, say, the lights that I have on another project. Now, for this, you're going to notice something. Those two drawings are in completely different scales. So maybe you will say now, well, that's it. You're done. There's no way for you to compare the two because once you overlay the two, they're going to be in completely different positions. But the good thing is this particular overlay tool actually lets you align the drawings by picking points that are known in both uh, drawings. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit just to make sure that I'm snapping to the right points and I'm going to click on three random points that I know um, I can locate in the next drawing. So let's say there and there and there and I click on OK. Once again, it does create a new drawing and it matches the scale of, of the first drawing to the second one. Therefore, I can actually uh, check things on a one-to-one -one scale, so there's no change in scale. And I don't need to do a, a mathematical conver conversion for such a thing. Uh, this will help you uh, in the process of both comparing and finding um, those uh, issues across different uh, designs. Cool. Um, let me close that. I'm going to close this one too there and close that one there. Now, comparison, comparing these things, um, especially when you're comparing uh, different revisions of the same discipline across a lot of drawings, might be a time might be quite time consuming, right? So you actually want to have some sort of help from the tool uh, to speed up that particular process because you may receive 20 or 30 drawings at a time and you really want to check what are the differences between the old uh, drawing and the new drawing. To do so, let's use again um, my structural drawings that I was checking before. Let's say these two, right? And I, I know that I find I was able to find a few differences in there. But let's use the reviews uh, feature uh, called compare documents. And it's actually already loading uh, one of the versions. That's the old one. And it's going to use, as a document B, it's going to use the second version. So those are the two drawings I have open. Um, once I have that, I can just uh, click on OK. And what Revy does, as you can tell here on the left, is that it actually goes and find all the differences between my two drawings. And it will give me the new drawing with red clouds and the old drawing without clouds so that I can tell what the differences are in these drawings. And they, it's going to show you things that you may not have picked up. Like I, I was able to pick up the change in one column, but apparently the change happened in four different columns. And the cool thing is that those red clouds that you have in there um, are going to be um, registered for you to start doing what we're going to do next, which is uh, communicating and tracking these issues. So by automatically adding markups to those differences, um, you can um, go through a list. That list is actually down here on a markup 
tab that uh, review actually accumulates and from that point you can actually clean up your markups um, you can do things like uh, let me unlock that and I can dismiss the ones that are not quite relevant so changes in the title block not quite relevant for me right now changes in the date this thing was printed not really and I finally get a actual list of things that I need to um, um, track and communicate now the communication of these things now that you have a series of markups let's say like those ones on the left side um, you could do this just by simply you know saving this as PDF and sending the the notes to the other person but you can actually do be more than that you can actually uh, select those markups like so go to it check see what that actually is uh, you can add comments to it why is this new column here there you go and you just call it new column as you can tell it's going to pick up my name from the computer name which is adding that to the author right and it's adding a comment to it so you can actually go comment by comment by clicking on this particular list and that's going to take you across the range of um, markups that you will have on the set of drawings. That's a good thing if you're just locating things um, manually um, using Blooming Review but you can actually generate if you want to send or make their life a little bit easier you can actually generate um, a report for this uh, to do so I'm just going to create a summary of my changes in PDF. Um, I want to include everything and I actually want to add that to my existing PDF. Uh, it's going to be an A4 format. I'm not going to change anything just for the sake of speeding this up. And I'll click on OK. Once it does that, let me close this tab just to show you what this thing actually does. When you do that, actually, let's close this tab like so. Um, when you do that, Revy does a really cool thing. It gives you a summary with a little snapshot of the change. It will give you some sort of information about it, uh, including your, com your comments. But it also creates a hyperlink to the drawing. So actually, you just need to click on this particular drawing and it will take you to the drawing and the location of the markup. So following a list of markups it's super easy because all you have to do then is follow the, hold on, there you go follow all of these markups and they will take you to the, to the original drawing. Okay, so communicating those, it's easy. You can create a report and we'll let you uh, um, keep track of what's going on with those. And in order to track what's happening with that particular issue, let's say this um, slab penetration there for a duct, um, in this particular case, that one there, I will say, well, you know what, that is something that has not been addressed yet. So it will add a, a, a timestamp saying that uh, the author, in this case myself, um, have said that this thing has not been addressed at this particular date. Now, if you send this particular document or to another person using Bluebeam Review or Bluebeam View, they're going to be able to come back to the same issue and they can change the status. Now, this is a really cool thing that um, Revit will, uh, Review will do, which is instead of changing it to the original, 
you will be able to um, you'll be able to do a couple of things. You can reply to it, and you can say will not change due to electrical specs. Done. And actually, by doing so, you're saying, no, I'm rejecting that. So you can tell that every single issue will keep track of all the backs and forth of a particular issue. And that can be kept on a single location. You can keep that on your site um, just by using your own set of PDF. Um, and it will add to the list of project issues that you may have um, on, on your projects, right? Um, now, there is a really cool tool within uh, Bluebeam Review that I want to demonstrate just quickly. Um, just to give you an idea, because that it's more on the lines of collaboration, but it's actually um, a, it works really well when you're, when you're doing uh, coordination with your external stakeholders, it's particularly when you're addressing this particular um, service coordination issues. Which is this particular set of drawings that I'm dealing with right now, although they might be local, you can share them with your engineers. The way Revit does that is by adding a service that is actually free if you get a license. Um, let me dismiss that and that, which is an online service called Blue, Bluebeam Studio. Uh, let me type in my password. And by doing so, you can create an account for free once you have the software, and it will let you host your projects online. Those projects will hold PDFs, and actually you can, you can upload more than PDFs, but it, it, it's particularly being um, uh, customized for PDF, and you can host all of your comments up there as well. So the only thing that the other person needs is a particular project ID, or you can send them an invitation to join the project. Therefore, you're actively keeping the coordination process in all the official um, documentation of your project uh, online. Just remember that it's a, a free service. You don't actually have to pay anything extra for it. And you can upload and keep the same organization that you have in your sets, put it there on the cloud for project collaboration on coordination. So with that, um, with these features, you can live track all the design related issues. Uh, you can do manual exchanges if you like, or you can use the cloud uh, with the studio uh, feature. Now with this, we actually finalize the uh, review uh, presentation. Um, and I think we have showcased two of the most powerful tools for project coordination. Um, within those tools, and if you follow a, you know, an organized workflow for coordination, you can be confident that the project will be coordinated comprehensively across all disciplines, both in 3D and 2D. So we can draw a few conclusions right there. Oops. Um, one of them is that an integrated design and project coordination requires both model-based and drawing-based coordination, um, not just one or the other. To coordinate a project, you need appropriate tools and workflows. Um, those workflows and those tools are available today. You don't need to use generic uh, tools or free tools to, to try to do the, the job. You can actually get access to these particularly uh, uh, made tools for such a purpose. Um, all of these tools and workflows um, are available today. And by doing so, you will be in the proactive side of the project development and the project coordination. Uh, we here in Central Innovation, Mark and myself, we can help you learning how to use these tools, how to implement these tools, and improving your, pro your current practices in terms of project coordination. Um, so that's what we have uh, for today. I hope uh, the presentation was uh, useful. Um, for more information, please go to our website or give us a call. Most of you, you if you're um, current customers, you probably know who your um, 
contact person is, so you can contact them as well. Uh, for everything else, just go to website and that you'll be uh, you'll be able to find all the information. Thank you very much to everyone. Thanks for sparing the time with this. And if you need anything from us, just give us a call. Thank you very much and have a good rest of the day.